Welcome to TVC Sunday Specials. Farming has remained the mainstay of whole communities in most parts of northern Nigeria, but hardly has it improved the quality of life for rural community dwellers beyond subsistence production. But that may be changing. Esther Mokpariola filed this Sunday special after she toured some communities in Kebi State where a $12 million intervention by the European Union and Oxfam International has entered its third year. Danko Wasagu local government is approximately four hours by road from Benin Kebi, the state capital. A journey stretching 291 kilometers. Most rural communities here have little or no government presence. There is no access to pipe-borne water, no electric power supply for its estimated population of more than 300,000. Their homes are made of old-fashioned bricks with poor ventilation and majority of the households engage in subsistence farming, which means they won't have enough money to meet basic needs, especially during the lean season. This puts them in vulnerable conditions. A four-year action project designed by the European Union and Oxfam International to enhance food and nutrition security and improve agricultural yields in 30 communities in the state has entered its third year. The $12 million worth project comprises multiple components, including the Farmers Training Field School, where rural farmers are trained on agricultural best practices. More than 13,000 farmers have acquired various skills on pre-season preparations, climate change mitigation strategies, and agribusiness skills. We have two plots, demo plot and the farmer's practice, so that to compare our farm and the farmer's farm. So we, uh, we planted the same day, we applied fertilizer the same day, every same the same thing. So uh, in that demo plot, we get 10 bucks. In farmer's practice, we get five bucks. Another model is the Village Savings and Loans Association, consisting of between 15 and 25 persons who save together and take small loans from those savings. They have a social fund from which grants may be given to support members in difficult times. Abubakar Ibrahim was a household farmer who depended mostly on handouts to survive. But all that changed when he joined a village savings and loans association. He not only owns a rice mill, which he bought on loan, he now also runs a local store. This one has helped me to treat my family and treat my father and my mother. And I am the one who takes their responsibility now. But that, that time, five days ago, our father and my mother take my responsibility. But now I take their responsibility. Also through the VSLA, more than 2,000 women have been trained in various business enterprises, including body cream making and liquid soap production, among others. Mohammed A. Danku is a trained nurse whose wife is one of them. He says the model not only adds more income to his home, but makes his wife empowered and financially independent. She used to help me with the money. So it enables me to pay school fees. And sometimes even in children, my children that are in primary school, I don't even put hand. She's the one taking care of them. A sizable number of children in some of these communities are malnourished simply because families lack information on child nourishment. In Danko Wasagu local government, a component of the project is addressing this concern. I'm training them because they lack knowledge of the importance of uh, exclusive breastfeeding, complementary feeding, and supplementary feeding. I, I told them the importance of initiation of breastfeeding within 30 minutes. Then exclusive breastfeeding, zero to six months. They have millet, they have guinea corn. 
I asked them to choose one that will have the uh, example with it. They say unicorn because it's the available grains around them. So we prepared, I told them how to fry the uh, guinea corn and soya beans. Other models of the project include conditional cash transfer, code named Cash for Work, where local communities in Bernin Kebi, Jega, and Danko Wasagu local governments are supported with cash to construct social amenities like water pumps, wells, and grain banks. We visited the district head of Dangamaji community in Jega local government, who says the project has strengthened the bond in the land, but expects the government to do more. Since the beginning of this program in this community, we thank God for the benefits. We must thank the organizers because there are many people here in Dangamaji who have told me how their farming has improved. They gave us seeds for our farms, for instance, rice, millet, and maize. We have harvested these crops from our farms and we are now able to feed our families. They have done lots of other projects in this community. We are grateful. Now imagine trying to use a convenience, for instance, and you have nowhere to go. That is what these people in this community have to face for a long time before the European Union decided to fund this project where they can build a latrine that can serve four settlements in this community. And this latrine has this soccer way pit, and in there we have where they go in there and do a defecation, which they normally call here short put. Vast portions of land in Nigeria's northwest are becoming desertified. But to help local farmers build resilience against nature's hand, the project is distributing more than 300,000 seedlings across the three local governments participating in the project. So every Muslim, it is said in the Quran that every Muslim that planted a tree, anybody who come and uh, make use of that uh, tree to uh, sit down and rest in that shade, that person will be rewarded by God. So that is why we are giving our students, every student, one tree to take care of, to water it uh, and to take care of it. You can look at our school, it usually a uh, group will uh, be blown up by tree, uh, by wind. So if this tree grows up, it will prevent that wind, the force of that wind from blowing our classes. The Kebi state government says it will review some of its policies to sustain the models adopted in the pro-resilience action project. Um, you know, basically because our economy is agrarian, you know, um, most of the industries the government is bringing forth, they are agri-allied industries. For instance, they, they are great, they are talks already when establishment of uh, potato processing factory that is aimed at reducing post-harvest loss of farmers, you know, because we have many farming communities that really produce put, uh, these tomatoes. A rich harvest is every farmer's pride. But for a rural community dependent mostly on agriculture and yet not able to bring its ancestral means of livelihood in step with modern trends, it is programs of this kind that are gradually bringing back smiles to people where farming continues to be threatened by poverty, conflict, and climate change. Esther Mapariola, TVC News, Burning.